Hey everybody, do you want to learn about a niche where there's a book that has only been published a little over a month ago that is already making $2,000 and kind of how you can do it too? Well, then this is the show for you. Hey everybody, this is Ashley with Publish with Ashley, where I come weekly, usually live, to talk about KDP, Etsy, printables, all sorts of things, and how to make money online and how to help you do it. I really enjoy this. Um, I love having the lives so that you guys can ask questions. So please join me if you can. All right. So let's get right into it. I wanted to, so let me do a little bit of a kind of, I guess, background into this one. So I actually um, am really into this niche and I've published kind of on and off um, books in this niche, but I actually started publishing a few around Christmas time, I think it was. Um, and they were kind of very, uh, very niche. They had a few things going for them. One, they're very kind of specific niche. Um, and two, I had a really great cover <laughs> for them. But I noticed I was looking at my last month's, uh, you know, totals and how much I sold of different books and what was popular. Um, and I noticed that these books actually were selling about 50 to $60 a month and they're fairly new. And so I thought, well, and this is no advertising at all. I've just put them out into the world and crossed my fingers and hoped because I thought they were pretty, they were pretty niche. Um, so I knew they were going to do a ton of money, but $50, $60 a month for a few books, like, and that's each one. Um, so, you know, I'll take $180 or $150 for these books with no effort really on my part. Um, anyway, so let's get right into it. Good morning, Bailey from California. Thank you for coming live. Let me uh, share my screen here. Okay. So word searches. Okay. Word searches are really popular. And the great thing <clears throat> truly the great thing about word searches is that they are disposable in the sense that if you make a series of them or several of them and people like what you're doing, they're going to purchase more. And people who purchase word searches don't just purchase one word search. They are into word searches. Um, and there are so many niches within the word search um, realm. You can go for a large print for seniors who really enjoy word searches, but they, you know, eyesight, they like the larger print. Um, there's quirky ones for memory. There's as many as you can shove into the thing. I think the first one here is like 4,000 word um, large print, right? There's um, years, there's decades one. Um, we'll scroll down. This one, let me scroll down here and I'll show you the one I picked out. Um, this Positive Vibes one. Um, that's that's a good niche in the sense it's going for something positive. Um, there's ones that are religious that do well. I actually have a few religious ones that do really well every single um, every single month. Um, but this one is the one I wanted to show you, and it's the spring word search. And if, if you look over it, let me pop this up. It was only published on March 28th of 2023, so a little over a month ago, and it is already. Um, this is at 4,000. 400. I think last night when I was looking at it, it was at 3,800, you know, BSRs, they change, they fluctuate. But at those rankings, it's selling about 29 books per day. Uh, it's about 24250 for the profit. So you're talking about $2,000 a month um, when you sell about that many and it's a $2, 250 profit. So that's pretty cool that this has only been out a little bit um, and it's already doing that well. So the key to really word searches that I've found is you really got to do something a little bit different or something um, kind of, you know, niche in the sense. Here's kind of a good one. The good old days word search full of nostalgia fun. Um, and it's got like the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. Now, the other thing I think you really got to know about word searches is, is I think you have to have a good tool, um, which is cool because actually um, I've been doing word searches uh, and that's why I was kind of interested in looking at my numbers previously, because uh, there's a tool coming out. It's opening on Friday, uh, May 5th. So you guys, I'll show you it and what I created and kind of some of my thoughts. So there's word searches. Yeah, they're very labor intensive unless you have a tool to do them. Um, this is a pretty cool tool. And what I like about it is it has you can do some really cool niche elements on it. So I was kind of reviving the books that I do and how I could make them really creative. So. So let me show you, let me show you what I created really quick. Let me open that up before. Okay. So this is what I created. Um, I had this, uh, 
I had this thought about steampunk because I kind of I'm into steampunk lately. Um, and so I created I found these really cool graphics on Creative Fabrica. And what I did is you make it's like word searches in the shape of something. So I was going to do not just like your niche in the sense of steampunk is pretty niche. Um, and there are steampunk books out there, which I think they could have done a better job. And this even is really pretty because the cool thing I think about steampunk being into it is the graphics. The graphics of steampunk are super beautiful. Um, I was having fun creating some in uh, AI, so Night Cafe making pictures. Um, but I also, in this case, I just downloaded um, some photos off or some, they're black and white, actually. These were black and white off of and so you can see I've created the cat, all um, the bottles. They have really pretty bottles. Um, this is like a cogwheel. Um, let's see, a raven. And I think there's one more, you know, the top hat. Um, goggles would be fun. Um, anyway, so I created this really quickly and easily by adding not only the steampunk words, um, like a dirigible uh, I don't even know what Phyllis, I don't even know what that word is. Victorian sprockets, penny farthing. And I know you're thinking, where are you getting all these crazy words? Well, that's the other cool thing about tools nowadays. Um, what I actually did, let's go back down. Okay. So what I actually did is I had chat GPT generate me. Um, and in my video on Friday, when I'm going to show you how I actually kind of made this whole process and how it works in the tool, I actually had chat GPT make me this nifty, well, it made up the words and then I put it into the Excel sheet. And then I'm just dropping these sets of 15 or 12 or whatever you want to decide your word count. Um, you have to go through them. Remember, ChatGPT is a great, fantastic tool, but you have to use your human brain to go through and say, okay, these are repeated or this is not a word or this doesn't make sense or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I went through and fixed some of these so that they would work. You definitely got to make sure you're not using anything copyright or anything like that. But for lists of words, chat GPT is awesome. It's just going to create lists of words, right? Um, and so you can use that tool because it's, it's kind of a mindless tool in the sense of, you're not using anything copyright. You're just making a list of words. And ChatGPT is a great tool for that. And I can show you how uh, in the in the next video I'll, or in Friday, I'll show you how I actually made it so that it was super simple, that it was copy and paste, and I didn't have to do a lot of thought around it, um, but created these. And then you just go through and fix them. And then I've been using these and putting them in word searches. So it's a really quick and easy process. And then having the tool, let me show you. I have it right here. Um, if it's going to open, <laughs> there we go. Having this tool to graphics, I drop in the list of words. It's thing. <laughs> Sorry, I can't move. Dropping in the words and dropping in the list of graphics and make it super easy and unique. Um, um, I think this is kind of something um, that is, it's really it's profitable. I love words. So, so, so it. And I think this tool is a cool way to add something that no one's kids love um, word searches shaped as things. Um, you can put them in your books. I have a ton of activity books where I have word searches shaped as things. There. Am I unmuted? <laughs> Hopefully that's working now. Um, anyway, sorry. I'll check my settings really quick. Audio. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, it hears me. Okay. Um, so I think that word searches are really fun. I make a pretty good um, income every single month from my unique word searches. And I think the really big things is you've got to have a tool to be able to do them easily. Um, this tool is 
it's amazing to make them really unique and do something with the pictures that I think most people are probably not doing. They're just making the typical square. And I think people are really going to enjoy that. Okay, the sound is back. Good. Thank you. Um, <laughs> hello, Becky. Um, but they're really fun to make and they're really profitable and there's so many niches. Um, the other thing I would definitely caution you is make really good covers. Covers, sell them um, and do something that appeals to the audience. There is definitely, if you look on the number one word searches, that's great. Um, you know, as far as getting an idea of what would sell, but you don't want to do exactly that. If you're going niche, um, like the one I'm selling is pretty niche, but the graphics I used like are, they're so, it's hard to explain without actually seeing it, but they're really intriguing and really interesting. And they're very specific for that particular niche. Um, there's something the people who are looking for that thing are attracted to, if that makes sense. Um, it's something they would like. It's, so it's not your typical word search cover. I mean, it definitely has, you know, the word search. I like to do the a word background so that you with circles around it so they know that it's a word search but it's the graphics are something very specific to that audience and kind of stand out and i know that they would like it so those are kind of the things i suggest um having a good tool really doing a really good job on your cover um and um doing something unique that other people aren't doing which is kind of why i like this tool um, but you don't have to use this one. There's other word searches out there. There's free ones out there, but they are definitely a lot more time intensive and you just create like one page at a time and you have to put it all together. But there, there are those out there if you are interested in that. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about, more th about this on Friday when it comes out, but do you guys have any questions? So let me, hello from Canada. Hello, Sandra. Um, hello, everyone. Okay, is there any questions you guys have for me? Um, Patel, who else are there? Die. Oh, I'm you're gonna die, Matiko. <laughs> I'm I did that wrong. I know Toko, right? Okay. Uh, sorry, I am the worst at pronouncing things, and then you put me on like talking to people, and I get all nervous, and I can't say anything normal. All right. Anyone have questions though? Let me. I am here live so that I can answer questions for you guys. Um, I love to help. I want to help. So um, you kind of have the advantage of having me here live. So ask some questions. Oh, what's the name of the software program? It is. Uh, what is it actually called? It is called Shape Word Search. Um, so I don't have it. I'll show you on Friday. I'll have the whole thing out. It's just, it's, it's not releasing till Friday. Um, but it's like a shape word search program. And so, uh, New Round Sean and his uh, team who I love their products because they really think of KDPers and they think of printables and they think of how can we make it easy on you? Like, I love that aspect of their products. They really try and make it how can we make it as easy as possible to go from A to B? Um, and then I, they do that. All right. Okay. Do I have an Etsy store? Oh, so someone was asking me about Etsy store. So let me, um, word searches were nice. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> so someone was asking me about Etsy stores and, um, printables. So I wanted to tell you, I kind of, I have a few Etsy stores. Uh, one of the ones I just opened, mm, I don't know, like a month and a half ago. Yeah, it's probably about a month and a half ago. I am now getting, yesterday I got three sales um, and I'm getting pretty much consistent sales daily. Uh, so Etsy stores are fantastic. They do take, like anything, I think it takes a little bit of time and effort and love. Um, and I've put a lot of effort into this store, um, consistent daily effort. And I can tell you for the past month, slogging along, I felt... Uh, you know, kind of disheartened because things weren't occurring as fast as I would like them to. I'm not using Etsy advertising because my, um, their digital products and they're like three to $4. And so at this point in time, I don't think advertising is, you know, cost beneficial that may change in the future. Um, but so I've been just kind of slogging along. I've continually adding products daily or tweaking products to, you know, change the tags or change things. Um, and I felt, and I'm doing Pinterest, just a daily pin or two to try and put my stuff out there. Um, and it felt very, it's felt very slow. Uh, but I'm, it, it's kind of like, you know, that, that curve where you start out really slow and it, 
you get right here and everybody quits. Um, that's kind of where I was, but I, I was determined that this year I was going to have an Etsy store that did fantastic at Christmas. Okay. So I've started like February, right? <laughs> and I'm slogging along and I think I'm right at that point where things go up because I'm getting more views on my stuff. I sold three products yesterday. Um, and so I, it, it's at that turning point. So my biggest thing with Etsy is you've got to touch your store daily. You've got to either change your product, change a tag, add a product, um, put it a little love into it. And it's going to be kind of a, unless you're doing outside advertising or something like that, it's going to kind of be a slow trudge, <laughs> but consistent effort does pay off. Um, the nice thing about an Etsy shop with digital, digital products is, you know, all I'm paying is the 20 cents to list things, which by the way, if you guys are opening an Etsy store, use my link that gets you 40 free, um, listings because when you're starting 40 free listings is an awesome deal. Um, so I'm doing the 20 cent fee and then, you know, their Etsy fees. So, but the rest is all profit. You know, I don't have to deliver anything to the customer because Etsy just delivers it as soon as they purchase it. I know it's really easy. I have very few customers. I haven't had one customer, um, since opening this store, I haven't had one customer ask me any questions. They've just purchased it and left reviews. So it's been super easy as far as that goes. All right. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I'm a steampunk dude. I love steampunk. So my daughter, she she loves it too. She just got into it. So she's got like uh, the strap thing and a belt and a hat. Oh, she loves her hat with the goggles. And oh, it's so cute. Anyway, so <laughs> everyone should wear it to church and everyone's like, that is style. <laughs> but she loves it. And I love it too. It's a really fun kind of an era. I mean, it's into steampunk books. So steam, what is it? It's like steampunk fairy tale retellings. So if you're into reading, I've been doing steampunk fairy tale retellings and they're really fun. So it's kind of out there and a little bit weird, but I like it anyway. So, you know, each to each their own. Everyone likes their own thing. <laughs> anyway, does anyone else have any other questions not on steampunk, <laughs> but any uh, KDP or Etsy questions that I can help you with? And I promise I will go through how on Friday, how I make my word searches, with the tool, how I use chat GPT and um, just, you know, how I do this and how you can do it too. And I think it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Okay. Any other questions? Because if not, I will go. And that's kind of all I had for you today. Just open your eyes up about word searches. Like I said, I was looking back at the word searches. I, I'd like to create them. Um, but I was looking back at the ones I created in December and they were doing like $50 a month and they are, they're small niches. And I'm not like, I wasn't expecting to do thousands of dollars. I wasn't expecting 2000 a month. I was expecting, you know, $50, $60 a month. Um, they were pretty quick to create. Um, so I'm happy with that. And I'm going to start doing more. And now that I see that they're doing well organically, um, I'm going to go back and start um, looking in how to advertise them so that it's how to smartly advertise them because they are very niche. Um, who like, I'm going to look at my products and even see, you know, what else was purchased with this type of thing um, and kind of just do a little bit of research to see how I can advertise them to the audience that is looking for them um, in a smart and cheap way, because I'm all about making it smart and cheap. <laughs> I don't like to just throw my money at things. All right. Um, let's see. Becky says, do you have videos just on Etsy? I will be, I'll probably be doing more now that I'm doing this consistent effort on Etsy. Um, I've been, I've always put some of my stuff out on Etsy, just KDP things. I've have low content books and I just kind of throw it out there and don't do anything with it. Um, and it makes me, oh, I don't know, about a thousand to 2000 a year, which I, you know, that's not too bad if I've just thrown out there. Um, but I think I can do a whole lot better. So now that I'm consistently putting out on Etsy, I think I will start to do some more Etsy, um, uh, like shows and things if you guys are interested in that because now i have more experience in it other than just throwing it out there and crossing my fingers um all right and yes it, i do think with etsy it, it's all about a consistent effort you can't you can't throw stuff out there and expect a lot um i have put stuff out there and like i said I, i've made some sales but not a lot but that's okay because i didn't put a whole lot of effort into it either so i understood that you know that's kind of how things work 
But um, I do want to share with you that, yeah, I've put in consistent effort with my Etsy store for a month and a half, kind of with nothing, <laughs> like crickets. And suddenly, you know, the past probably two weeks, I've seen an uptick. Yesterday was three sales. Um, I have a lot of views as of today. So I, it, I think it's on that trajectory. But I think you do have to kind of put more effort in than you think to get it going. Uh, is June too early to advertise notebook for back to school? No, no. Uh, school. I just actually bought school supplies for my daughter yesterday for next year. <laughs> so the, the on the go parents like me who are, well, yeah, because I have a lot of things going on are purchasing their school supplies in June and July because a lot of kids go back to school in August. And if you wait till August to get your school supplies, you're, uh, yeah, it, it's rough. I've done that. <laughs> I went to go a week before school to get my kids school supplies and there was nothing. I mean, it was like glue sticks and, and some pencils and there was not the scissors they needed or the specific red folder or whatever crazy things that the school asked for were not there. So I think actually starting to um, advertise in June is perfect. Um, you get a little bit of visibility and then July people really start purchasing. Um, people start purchasing in June. Uh, you know, I purchased in May. <laughs> so there's those who are, you know, June and July too. And then there's the sad August people who are, are having it rough. Thank you on, um, yeah, thank you for congratulating me on Etsy. I'm excited because I was a little, I spent and a half and I was just spending time and money for no reason. But I was trying to follow everything everyone says. And it, it's really kind of, I think it's there. So um, anything else? Yellow trophy smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's all I've had um, for today. Thank you guys for showing up live. I love having answering questions. I love helping you all um, come with questions in the show notes, um, you know, in the comments or whatever on either Facebook or YouTube. Let me know what you guys want to hear about. Um, if that's Etsy, that's great. Um, I'm happy to share my journey and experience and things that I have found out. All right. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you guys next week. Bye.